Hey guys, Melissa here and welcome to my channel. So how many times are you stumped when you make like a framed pendant and you're like, how am I going to attach this to a chain or a cord? In the past, up until now, I have used big split rings. A cord can fit through there. I'll attach these to my pendants. Even though they worked, it doesn't seem like I put much thought into them. So I made these pendants recently and I almost forgot to put a bail on. So in a pinch, I just made my trusty split ring bail. But you know, when I was thinking about it and I thought they deserved a better looking bail to complement the weaving better. So I came up with this style bail that incorporates the same weave I used on the pendant and it'll be easy to fit any chain through there, thick, thin, whatever. I just think that's a better choice. So if you want to see how I made these, just stay tuned and I'll show you how. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to take my split ring off and I'm going to make this pendant a proper bail. And for that, I grabbed some 18 gauge and some 26 gauge because I'm going to do the modified sumac weave just like in this pendant. I'm going to grab my 18 gauge wire. It's round wire, by the way. And just to remind you, I always have all my tools and materials all listed down in the description if you want to check that out. I try to mention them as I'm going, but a lot of times I don't. So if you're curious, just head down there. Okay, so I cut five inches and we're gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna use my flat nose pliers to help me do this. And now I'm going to make my little hook that my bail would hang off of. Hook, loop, whatever you want to call it. should look like that. That should lock in my pendant pretty good. And now I'm going to take my 26 gauge wire and I'm going to weave my pattern, which is the modified sumac, which to do that, I'm going to anchor it a couple times here on my bottom wire. So I'm coming out from the bottom. I'm going to go over the top and go once around. I'm going to go behind and then go once around and back over the top and go once around back behind and go once around periodically I'll go through and smoosh that down and yes I'm using a guitar pick and I'm gonna keep weaving until I get at least an inch or so. Do a few passes, smoosh it down. Do another few passes. for my thumb to hold on to so I'm gonna see if I can clamp this without damaging it or twisting it that's better
smoosh that down. Keep going. probably stop. I kind of get a rhythm going and I can't, can't stop. There we go. Nice and smooshed. That should be plenty. See, so I'll anchor it on the top wire here. And snip it. Snip it down here as well. It's all cockeyed because I was clamping it. All right. Okay, get that all straight. Get your weave compressed and kind of flare out your wires there. That helps keep your weave compressed. All right, so I'm going to grab my bail making pliers and I'm going to form my bail just like that and I'm just going to simply wrap wrap my wires around This still open so you can still add your pendant once you get everything locked in. All you need to do is pull that aside, just like a jump ring, and then push it back. Easy peasy. Obviously I still need to oxidize these, but that's not a problem. So that's how we look. Okay, so I grabbed my three pendants that I made in a previous video. I'll go ahead and link that above if you want to know how I made these. Here's the one I showed you. I think it complements the pendant pretty good. Much better than these just split ring bales, in my opinion. I went ahead and did the same thing to this pendant. This one I made a little bit different. I made the hook a little longer, and then I wrapped the wires around, and then I folded it over. But this ended up being a little bit tighter than the rest. But that's an option as well if you're worried about these being an open loop which technically they're pretty sturdy, so I wouldn't worry about them opening. So that is it for me. What'd you guys think of this tutorial? I like how these turned out. So I think I'll be making bales like this in the future to better complement my frame pendants. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. My question of the week is, so now Halloween's over. I've seen a lot of people decorating for Christmas already. If you celebrate Christmas, when do you start decorating? For my house, I like to have fall decor for the whole month of November. I don't put a tree up at least until Thanksgiving is over. And even then, I'll leave my fall leaves and stuff out until, you know, winter is officially here. Let me know about that in the comments below. 
So I'll see you guys there and I'll also see you guys in the next video. Once again, if you enjoyed this tutorial, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. There are more videos to come and don't forget to trust the journey. Have a great week. Thank you.